Hello everyone and welcome to the Junior and Intermediate Scratch Challenge number 8. In this Scratch Challenge what we're going to use is we're going to work with some random numbers and see some cool things we could do with random numbers. So what I thought we would do to start is make a really simple magic 8 ball um, as a kind of way to use some random numbers. So to start instead of using Scratchy the Cat I'm going to use a magic 8 ball and I'm going to import that um, into that sprite into scratch so i thought i would quickly go over how to import a sprite so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go onto the internet and look for a magic or i'll just look for an eight ball let's just keep it nice and easy when we search up an eight ball i'm going to go to images and i get all these different eight balls and one thing i don't want is an eight ball with a background on it so i want something with a transparent background so if you go over to your tools and i clicked on the tools button right here and then if you click on the color feature and you click transparent, it will only give you images with the transparent background. So now if I click on this image right here, you can see there's a checkered background right here. That checkered background indicates that that's a see-through um, background. So it's going to show up nice and really will render well against the background. So what I'm going to do is I will view the image and it has a transparent background and what I'm going to do is I will then right click on it and click save the image and save it to my device so if you're on a Chromebook you save it to Google Drive I'm just going to save mine where it's a nice easy place for me to get that later so there it is saved when I go back into scratch now what I can what I am going to do is I'm going to upload a sprite from my computer so if you're on a Chromebook you'd select from where you saved it within your Chromebook and there it is right there click open there's my eight ball. Yikes, it's gigantic. So to start, I'm going to remove Scratchy the Cat. So I right click on Scratchy and I go delete. And a nice easy way to shrink the size of an object is you can go up here to the top, and this is the shrink button. And you can click on this a couple times just to shrink it down. And there is a good size eight ball. And if you want to grow it a bit, you can grow it a bit. There we go. So that's perfect. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is we want to be able to ask the eight ball a question and then when we will make it when we click on it um, the eight ball will either say a yes a no or a maybe so what we're going to do to start is I'm going to start making sure I'm coding for my magic eight ball and we'll make this that uh, not when the space key crest but when this sprite is clicked on and the trigger will be clicking on the sprite and it then will then get this code to happen as I had said, the um, block of code we're going to use is the random number block. And this is like a dice. So most dice have six sides on it. And uh, a dice will pick a random number between one and six. So any random number. And to see how this works, I always like to double click on it. So that's four, two, five, five, three, five, three. And they got a one. And you just kind of make sure that it gets those. So good. You've got pick random one to six. So you, for me, I'm going to want to go with three different choices. A yes, a no, or a maybe. So I'm going to want to pick a random number between one to three. So that means my number will either be a one, a two, or a three. So that's going to give me three possible options. You can't just pick a random number. You need to store it somewhere. So to usually store something, you're going to go to data, and you want to make a variable. We'll just call this a random number. Keep it for all sprites. You don't have to make it a clear variable, cloud variable, and you click OK. So now you'll see random number shows up right here. To make the variable go away, you can click the checkbox right there and it disappears. To make it visible again, you can make it come back. But the user doesn't need to see a random number, so I'm just going to hide that from our, our uh, our user for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick in this variable block called set random number two. Not change random number by, but set random number two. And this is going to set it to zero. If I want to set it to zero, I want to set it to a random number. Connect that block, and this might be an opportunity for you to turn on the visibility of random number. Let's just click this right and make sure we're picking random numbers. All right, we got a three, two, two, one, and you see it's now working. So each time I click on our magic eight ball, it's picking a different random number and setting the value of random number to our number one, two, or three. 
Perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to use a comparer operator and the compare we're going to use is an equal sign. We're going to set it up so that way um, if a random number is 1, so that's one of our possibilities, and you heard my sentence already get started, I need an if. So I need an if then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay if my random number equals 1 then, and I'm going to go like that and connect it. Zoom in a bit so it's a little bit easier to see my code. So if my random number equals 1, then I want to say, we'll get the random, the magic eight ball to say, not hello, but we'll get it to say yes. Now, if you don't want to spend the time and duplicate this every time, you can right-click on this and duplicate it. So if random number equals 2, we'll get it to say no. And then I'll duplicate it again. And if my random number is 3, then I'll get it to say maybe. And there's a very basic Magic 8-Ball coded. So if I click on it or if I ask you a question like, hey, Magic 8-Ball, is it going to be sunny tomorrow? Yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to hide my random number because the user doesn't need to see that. Hey, Magic 8-Ball, um, are the Preds going to win the Stanley Cup? Oh, it doesn't look good for the Preds saying no. So if you've ever used a Magic 8-Ball, you'll also know that it gives a lot more um, options than just um, yes, no, or maybe. So if you really wanted to make this more complicated, one option for you to do is you can do, you can do search for the magic eight ball sayings. What will happen is you can find all the different responses for the magic eight ball. So there's your all the positive yes answers right there that you could code for. There's all your uncertain or maybe answers, and there's all your no answers. Um, so what you can do is, I believe there's 20 different ones in that list right there. So you could then change your project to be picking a random number between 1 and 20, and make a different if for each one of those 20 possibilities, and you can have yourself coded a Magic 8-Ball. One other use that I'll quickly show um, that I really like using a magic uh, random number for is I'm going to bring in a background really quick. And the background I'm going to use is from the other category, and it's the Cartesian grid. The Cartesian grid is good because it helps me see. Ooh, my magic eight ball definitely does not like that. Wow, that did not go well. All right. That because it's cut in my it's too big in this area here, so it actually didn't cooperate very well. I'm not going to argue with it or fight with it for the moment. So, the Cartesian grid's helpful in this situation because within my screen it tells me the boundaries to my whole screen. So it goes to um, the two number lines here. There's a number line that goes uh, right to left and a number line that goes up and down. The number line that goes right and left is my x uh, number line or my x axis. My number line that goes up and down is my y number line or my y axis. You can see down here as I move my pointer around, it tells me the location of my pointer. So the very bottom here, the lowest value for my y is negative 180 and the very biggest value is positive 180 for my y axis and positive 240 for my x and negative 240 for my x. And I'll show you why this is important in a second. So a fun thing that you can do sometimes is uh, we'll kind of get, we'll add another when this sprite clicks. So we'll kind of adjust our code. And what I like to do, I'm going to move this over so I got a little bit more real estate. Sorry about this. Right over. So a fun thing you can do um, when the sprite clicks is we'll get the Magic 8-Ball to move randomly for a second. We'll go somewhere random after we click on it. So what we'll do is I'll go to motion and we'll use a glide. And I want it to glide for one second, but to somewhere random. So I go to my operators again. And for my x value is the one I'm going to code for first. 
I'm going to pick a random x value between 240 and negative 240. So I pick a number from 240 to negative 240. And please make sure you remember to enter in that negative sign right there. It's very important. And then I plunk it into my x value. And you know it works when it starts to glow. So there we go. I've added that in. I'm going to bring in another pick random, and this random is going to pick a random value from my y-axis. My maximum value is 180, and my minimum or my lowest value is negative 180. I again, pick that up, and I'm going to plunk it right there for the y-value, and you'll notice my block extends each time. It's getting really big. And now I'm going to go like this, connect it, and so now when the sprite's clicked, I'm going to glide for, I'll make this a bit bigger so I can read it. So now when the sprite's clicked, I'm going to glide for one second to, or the sprite's going to glide for one second to a new location. So let's make this bigger. So let's ask the Magic 8-Ball uh, another question. Magic 8-Ball, um, is this the coolest project on Earth? Here we go. I click. It's maybe the coolest project on Earth, and it glides somewhere random. Magic 8-Ball, are you telling me the truth? Maybe. And you can see now I've got it gliding for one second to a random location each and every time. So for scratch challenge number eight, what I'd like you to do is you can complete the um, magic eight ball for all 20 um, random numbers that you could use for um, the magic eight ball. Or you can find other really neat and awesome ways that you can use a random number generator in a project. Sometimes people use this for how bad guys uh, work in a video game or for different options of uh, questions in a multiple choice, uh, not multiple choice, uh, different options for questions in a multiplication game. So you can design your own multiplication game with this. There's really a lot of amazing things you can do with a pick random number generator. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing some of your amazing creative work that you do with the pick random block. Take care, goodbye.